Much is said about the special relationship between the United States and Europe, the transatlantic partnership to beat all others. The legislators of both sides are a crucial part of the equation. The European Parliament here, the two houses of Congress in Washington. Reporter skims across the pond to compare and contrast. Two politicians walk us through some of the complexities with the aid of an American historian. Eric Paulson, Republican from Minnesota, a congressman for seven years. Bernd Lange, socialist and Democrats from Germany, who first became an MEP in 1994. And historian Vincent Morelli from the Congressional Research Service. I wouldn't say there were significant power, power differences between the two. They're all, both are unique institutions with their own we, uh, strengths and weaknesses. But subtle differences separate what each legislature can actually do and initiate. Congress rose out of the ashes of the War of Independence in the 1770s. Today it's two chambers, the House of Representatives, 454 members, and the Senate, 100 members. Both are dominated by the Republican Party, making it problematic for Democrat President Barack Obama to push through his plans. The European Parliament is a single chamber that rose from the ashes of World War II. It has seven main political groups from the EU's 28 member states. It's dominated by the centre-right, the centre and the centre-left. The shakedown in powers is like this. Congress, the federal budget, foreign policy, tax collection, senior appointments and the removal of the president by impeachment. The European Parliament has co-decision and blocking powers over the budget, election of the commission and some supervisory powers. It can't initiate legislation or raise taxes. On foreign relations it can only advise. Every member of Congress on any given day can introduce a piece of legislation, whereas in the Parliament you wait for the commission for the big pieces of legislation. An interesting case study is TTIP, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership being negotiated by the European Commission and the US. Parliament is not directly involved in the negotiations. Nonetheless, today finds the head of its International Trade Committee, Bernd Lange, in Washington for talks. Now we are going to the Hill and uh, we'll meet some Congress uh, men and give them also a clear signal that we expect uh, a more ambitious position from the US side. And this advice to EU negotiators? Take our points on board, otherwise it would be problematic to get an agreement through the parliament. The times where trade agreements were negotiated behind closed doors are over. On to Capitol Hill and a meeting with Eric Paulson, a Republican senator deeply involved in TTIP and very aware of the machinery and powers, sometimes the lack of them, of the European Parliament. Parliament plays a role reflecting public opinion, making sure the commission is on track to follow certain negotiating guidelines and so we want to make sure we're having a full uh, conversation about what those guidelines should be. We do the same thing in Congress as we advise our president in those negotiations with our trade ambassador and we think that'll produce a better result. Mr. Paulson is also aware that key trade agreements have been rejected by Parliament before, like ACTA, the anti-counterfeiting trade agreement signed by several major economies but rejected by the EU after MEPs felt it eroded the rights of citizens. They want to make sure that they're responding to what their constituencies are telling them are important. And I think the system is a little similar to the United States where the parliamentarian, par parliamentarians, you know, ultimately uh, they ultimately are trying to give some guidance to the commissioner. A new trade agreement with Europe will level the playing field for American companies. They do things differently in the States, no doubt about that. But they see more similarities than differences with the EU in the implementation of democracy. And that's important. <laughs> it brings the houses closer, gets them listening to each other. The European negotiations are going to have more support just because these are our best friends, our best allies, our values are the same. Uh, stronger bipartisan support. So I think it's just going to be building excitement actually about these negotiations as time goes forward, knowing full well it's still going to take, you know, up to a year or thereabouts to make sure that it's done successfully. 
What next in the evolution of the European Parliament's powers? The 2009 Lisbon Treaty handed more of them to it, making the Commission and European Council less obscure bodies, managing legislation affecting 500 million citizens from behind closed doors. But any new powers would have to be made by a new EU treaty, and that's not on the horizon yet. The whole Bereich der Außen- und Sicherheitspolitik, der ist natürlich noch nicht vergemeinschaftet und da werden wir, glaube ich, weiter arbeiten müssen. Aber es gibt da noch ein paar Politikbereiche, die noch nicht voll entwickelt sind. Aber insgesamt ist mit dem Lissabon-Vertrag natürlich eine große Kompetenzerweiterung des Parlaments gegeben. Die muss auch uh, ordentlich ausgefüllt werden. In the case of ACTA, a really big wake-up call was sounded to the European Commission. Nevertheless, a tension in the division of power remains. Much still resides in the hands of member states, individually and collectively, acting through the European Council. Bis 2009 war sicherlich ähm, in der Kommission, aber auch in vielen Mitgliedstaaten die Meinung vorherrschend, internationale Abkommen sind auszuhandeln ohne Beteiligung des Parlaments. Und das hat sich fundamental geändert. Ich glaube, es ist in der Zeit heutzutage, dass Handelsverträge, andere Verträge unter Beteiligung der demokratisch gewählten Repräsentanten auszuhandeln sind. This then is the principal message. Power is a fluctuating thing, never still. It diminishes and increases through different epochs, as much in the United States as in Europe. And right now, here, say MEPs, it's changing gradually to their advantage. It seems to be a lot of people saying.